Hi guys. Welcome to Grody's Race and Rest Day. I'm Dano. Okay. No car stuff tonight. We're going to talk a little bit of personal shit. I've uh, done the video three or four times. I was actually chatting with another YouTuber the other day. I was. Um, he's got 40 odd videos. I've got like 400 odd. We've been doing it about the same time. I didn't do it to become monetized and to make money. I would like to become monetized and soon enough it will happen. Um, you know what? I'd love to be monetized and then that way and have a million subscribers. Then that way I could uh, have products paid for. I could have sponsorships. I could have all that kind of stuff. But anyway, chatting with old mate and he was talking about he does three to five hours each video of editing. And I just had a bit of a giggle and I looked at him and I went, man, I just do 10, 15 minute videos at the longest, usually. And uh, I'll film it. If I don't like it, I'll just delete it and I'll film it again. <laughs> it's raw. It's just what it is. So what I wanted to talk about was uh, uh, I've been helping a few guys through some stuff lately and a couple of these guys have helped me. Um... I, I chatted with a, a gentleman last night for an hour and a half and we, we had a really good chat, chatting about uh, relationships and stuff and compatibility. So I'll get back here. I'll get into that in some other videos. What I wanted to chat about was you know, my recent breakup. I don't, um, as much as I wanted to just for us to stay friends, I don't think that will happen. I don't think she can. Me, I can. Hey, I could see her with another guy. I'd be happy for her. If she found the man of her dreams tomorrow, I would be so happy for her. She's not a bad chick. She's just not my chick. You know? If you're with somebody and it fizzles out and dies off, uh, she cheats on you, uh, whatever, right? goes to shit, you break up. You don't have to be enemies, guys. You can do it amicably and just say, hey, let's just do this. But most of the time, somebody reaches out for more. Um, something's not, you know, one party's not happy. So, yeah. And at the moment, Joe won't talk to me on the phone. Eh, she'll answer a message every now and then. Uh, I think she's having a little bit of troubles, you know. I've I got to stay in the shop. I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Um, I've been here 10 years now. I was always here temporarily. Hence why the joint was never... It's always changed over the last 10 years. I now have just accepted the fact that this is my home. At this moment in time, this is my home. So I've built in the engine room better. I've got an engine in there at the moment. Uh, got my record player set up. I've got to go get some just maybe chords and stuff and plug it all into the amp and plug in my big-ass speakers. And I'll start listening to records during the day. And then what that does is I'll listen to a record, I'll go flip sides, listen to the other side. It gives me something, uh, records have got a bit of a, a bit more of a natural kind of vibe. As for the relationship kind of stuff, what I wanted to talk about was come up with this hypothesis about men and women, right? Majority of men are positively charged. We remember that we remember the good stuff. This is what most of us do, especially Gen X, right? We remember the good stuff. The negative isn't such an important thing with us, whereas with a woman, negative, charged. We are we are negative and positive of a battery. That's what we are. Right? This is why we're attracted to each other because we're a part of this thing. Now, I did, I did make a few little comments about, you know, when you see, usually when you see a gay man couple, you know, poofs, so two homosexuals, usually they're quite happy, right? They're a little bit promiscuous and they'll fuck everything, whatever, right? But usually two poofs are reasonably happy, unless they've got depression. Then when you see a lesbian couple, usually, <laughs> usually they are just negatively charged. <laughs> it's just horrendous. So this kind of, there's, there's a bit of proof here. So why I'm talking this way 
women need to understand that they're negatively charged and men need to understand that they're positively charged. So for us, when we try to say something about a woman doing something wrong, you know, like, oh, you haven't mopped the floor. Oh, they lose their shit. <laughs> oh, you fucking call me your maid. Hey, you know what? We're not good at doing the, the impressioning of the negativity to get something done. We're good at positively, usually most guys are good at positively reinforcing. So when a guy starts talking about the negative stuff, it's very hard for him to get that through. Whereas a girl, she can fire out the negative shit and we kind of accept that. So we're very, very opposite men and women. Now where I was getting to with all this is probably the last 10 years, every relationship breakup I've had, I've now gotten to a point where I don't really, I don't really dwell, dwell and beat myself up anymore. So I remember when my little boy, he's 16 now, right? I've seen some photos of him today. They actually blew me away. I've got some photos in there on disc of when he was little, little, like nine months old and stuff. And it's one thing you've got to leave behind a child. If you can leave a child behind once you have died and they carry on, that's a beautiful thing that you've done for the world. And I remember when I broke up with Chantel, I remember laying on the floor in my house in Elizabeth with my stereo absolutely cranked. And it was like five o'clock in the morning I woke up and the house was rumbling. My poor neighbours. I remember the pain I put myself through losing my family, losing my, my, my stepdaughters, losing my son and, and my, my family, my, my nearly marriage. I was nearly married. And then I look at how I deal with things now. I'm 44, nearly 45. And I sit and I think it's so much easier to just go, hey, this is breaking. Can we repair it before it shatters? No, it shattered. Okay. Let's move on with life. Let's work this out. Let's work out how to do this. I know I'm not the only one that thinks this way, but I know not a lot of people think this way. Right? So I'm not thinking everybody can think this way, but what I'm saying is if you do have a breakup or you're in a relationship where you're not actually compatible, you're probably not going to go the distance. If your compatibility is low with your partner, you're not going to go the distance. It's going to be hard work. The more compatible you are with your partner, the longer the distance it's going to go, the smoother it's going to run. It's just that simple. So I don't think, I, I'm definitely not going to give up on love. And I've been madly in love twice, like madly. I've, I've loved people. Look, I was in love with Joe. Um, but I'm different to what I was when I was madly in love with these girls. I was head over heels, um, dumb love, we'll call it, right? Both of those girls were treacherous. They were, they were so beat down. They were so fucked over by life that all they did was punish men, cheat on them, treat them like shit. My, the last six years, I did just under six years with Joe, so the longest relationship I've done. I feel quite blessed that I got to spend that time with her. Uh, she doesn't want to talk to me now. That's fine. That's her choice. Um, obviously, we might still be friends in five years' time. We might not. I don't know. I'm, I'm easy. She knows a lot about me. I know a lot about her. I understand who she is and what she's about. Um, she understands who I was. And who I am now, I'm, I'm on an evolution at the moment. I'm evolving into my next evolution. It's like, you know, Pokemons. <laughs> if you're not constantly evolving, if you are making that same mistake over and over and over and over again, you're wasting your time. Every time you have a failed relationship, if you're not learning from it, if you're not making yourself better, 
you're just damaging more and more people as you go. And they'll damage you, you'll damage them, they'll go off damage someone else, you'll go off damage someone else. Our world's an absolute shambles at the moment because too many people that aren't compatible get together because it's like, oh, you got nice tits. Oh, you're a sexy looking guy. You're a sexy looking girl. Fucking, you jump online. Like, I thought, okay, single. I'm not just going to, okay, so I, I did look on, I was like, okay, so what's this single scene like now? It's disgusting. I've got some ideas. I might, I might put together some stuff. I, I would like to see, I'd like to see something better. I'd like to see it a little bit easier. It used to be easy, you know. Forty-five years old. So any any young people who are watching this, it was easy to find another partner. And you would go out. You go to a friend's house. There'd be someone there. You talk. Boom. You get them. You get their number. Or well, half the time you wouldn't even get their number. You'd be taking them back to your place later that day. <laughs> It was easy. Now, pull the screen up and swipe this way or I don't know, you know, like the world's full of lonely people that will pay money to OnlyFans models and, and sit at home and wallow and pull their dick. Now, I'm practising semen retention at the moment. Yeah. Getting a bit personal, guys. Wait. It's worth it. So the energy exerted and the connection you have with someone when you, you're intimate and you have sex with them is very, very different to the release you have when you masturbate. So at the end of the day, masturbation is, is I think it's actually, especially when there's porn involved, What what's happening is, you're looking at a woman who has low self-esteem, has usually has drug addiction, and is stuck in a in a loop in her world. And I worked this one out with um, a star that died not long ago, Jessie James, gorgeous blonde chick. Her and her partner, a couple of years younger than me, suicide. Life was a mess. And then I sit there and I think, okay, so do they receive all the negative, all the lonely energy through their videos? Do they receive it? Because all these people around the world are watching their videos. So at any one time, right? So we're talking, okay, right at this moment, my guesstimation is there's probably a thousand people at this moment watching her video. Because there would be two and a half billion people in the, in the world watching porn. Right? At this moment, 1.5 to 2.5 billion people would be watching porn sometime today. So a thousand people at a time that are lonely watching your video, wishing that they were the man pumping that girl, right, in these, in these disgusting things that they do. And then I sit there and I think, are they getting all that negative energy? through the energy sphere, through this world? Is it is it all impacting them? Yes, it is. So I sat there and I went, wow. So I can't watch porn. Now, the thing is, you imprint what you want in your life. So as a child, if you've got a picture of a Porsche on the wall and then you see a guy down the road driving a Porsche and every day, that's what you see, that's what you see, you will subconsciously imprint that in your mind. That's what you want. I, is you want that Porsche, you want that. You will get that if you want it enough. Tate's one, watching guys with Ferraris. Bam, that guy has gone further. He's gone further than what he wanted, but he worked it out. He hacked life. Now, I've worked out that because of my disruptive uh, upbringing, and seeing these drunk people and these people on drugs and the things that happened in the toxic family environment. This is why I always looked for damsels in distress because girls would be crying because their partner beat them up and all sorts of shit, right? But then 
in my 20s, I was a porn addict. Porn was my thing. So I had imprinted in my mind that I was after one of these girls or a girl like that. That's, that's what I was imprinting. So I had imprinted not the girl on the screen, but the energy behind the screen that beat down low self-esteem girl. And this is what I always ended up with. And this is what I have worked out. This is what the video is about, is trying to get people to change what they're looking for in the world. So since what's happened with Joe, so Joe was an introvert, I'm an extrovert. Extroverts out there, you extroverts, be careful being with an introvert. Introverts can be can be great because they have they're not as difficult to deal with as another the extrovert. Right? But for me, I'd rather another extrovert. I'd just rather just be a, a power couple that's just crazy, you know, in the best ways. Now, when you look at porn, look at dirty girls, look at Insta models, all the rest of it, you are imprinting that into your mind. That is what's coming to you. That's what's coming to you every time. Me? Right? Do you know what I've decided that I'm doing? So what I've been doing lately? I only look at women with virtue now. So I watch a a chick from America. She's a pastor. She's a minister. So I'm not I'm not a church going guy. But this is a woman with virtue that is she's a God fearing woman. She's a, a pastor of a she's a, a minister. So I watch her because I want to find that kind of woman now. It doesn't mean I want to find a religious woman. It means that I want to find that woman with virtue, a bit of an extrovert, one that's... And, and this is the thing, watching watching a woman on YouTube and listening to what she's got to say, and she's got great advice this year. There's a couple of them that I watch, and I'm doing this because I'm imprinting in my mind now but I want this girl that with virtue that won't just jump into bed with me. You know, one that, hey, if I have to marry a woman before we sleep together, you know what, I know I'm good in bed. I, I, I can do whatever I can do. She's going to be good in bed because, you know what, at the end of the day, if you love somebody and you marry them, who cares? Might not be perfect, but that's the evolution of the couple, right? And this is what it used to be. This is what traditional relationships were about so i now say to you if you are chasing the dirty girl all you will get is the dirty girl i'm not i'm not saying about my last relationship as being that i've also noted that every time i date a girl that has issues with her dad it's hard work and it is guys it's it's hard work. They, they're, they're male figure in life. And, I'm, and I've seen this with my, my sister as well. You know, yeah, I love her. I love her to pieces. She's amazing. Hold on. I've got to let the dog out. Hold on two secs. Right. She doesn't actually want to go out. She wants to go and shut the gate and go for a walk. All right. So... Being a man and having little, I, I had daughters. I've got a daughter of my own and I had stepdaughters as well. It's super important as a man that you teach your girls what kind of man they need to find. If you're a shit man, they're going to find shit men. If you, so many women that I've met have had such a shit time with their dads and their their life has just been, a train wreck because of it, you know? They'll go through a promiscuous stage. They'll go through stages where they just don't trust men. Others will go through stages where they, they'll they have girlfriends because, you know, they, they get through the man-hating stage. So I've worked out the years that I'm going to chase. I've worked out the star signs I'm going to chase and I've worked out the Chinese astrology I'm going to chase. 
and I have three points. If a woman falls now, if a woman falls into all three points, I will very much consider that. But if she doesn't have a good relationship with her dad, no, I won't. And this is the sad part. There's not plenty of fish in the sea, guys. Girls, there's not plenty of guys out there. There's plenty of wrong people out there. Guys and girls, you've got to believe it. Plenty of wrong people out there. Your person should be the right star signs. You should be kindred animals in Chinese astrology, right? I'm going to go further into it with me. I'm going to go right in. If this person isn't 80 to 90% compatible, I'm not going to give them the rest of my life because that's what I'm, that's what I'm putting on the table now is to death do us part. I've never been married. I would, I'd like to get married. So, realistically, they've told us all this bullshit. They've pushed all these dating sites in front of us where if you look at the picture and you don't like the picture, that person could be the most compatible person with you in the world. And you look at a picture and they're, oh, they don't look happy. Of course they're not happy. They're on an internet dating site. They're probably pulling their put over, over porn because... They're, neg they're negatively charged and down at this moment because life sucks. We've all got to pull our shit together, become the best human beings that we can, not for anyone else but ourselves. And me? I'm in a position where I like the human I am. You know, my, my stepdad called me called me a prick and said I was dis it was disgusting what I did to Joe. I didn't do anything bad. We called off a relationship, six-year relationship. That was a good, good effort for me, someone with an attention deficit issue. I was proud of myself. Made it to six years with this woman, a month off six years. You know? Fuck it. I pat myself on the back. It's about time we all looked at life a bit different. Uh, there's a couple of couple of lads that actually watch some of my videos. If you're still pining over these girls, go to bed tonight. Start thinking about different girls. And don't touch your thing in it. But start understanding that the shit you look at is what makes your life. So all this internet stuff is designed for us to, it's designed to mould our lives by giving us ideas and laying groundwork there. Look, this, sorry, sorry, it's such a long video. If anyone's still listening, like watching and stuff, thank you. Um, If you want better, you have to think better. If you want better, you have to act better. If you want somebody to love you, you need to love you. I look in the mirror and I'm happy with the guy I am. doesn't matter what anyone in this world says. No one in this world can hurt me and upset me as much as me. When you realise this, when you learn that, when you learn that what you're putting into your mind is moulding your life, your life will change when you change what you put into your mind. All right? One little example, people send me, you know, snuff movies from like snuff videos from Colombia and shit like that. You know, I don't watch any of that stuff. I don't want to see people getting shot. I don't want to see people getting stabbed. I don't want to see any of that bad shit because I don't want it in my life. I don't want in my reality. Now, I understand it's there, and I'm not dismissing it, but I'm not going to entertain it. Same with porn, same with all the other bad shit. All right? 
I don't drink, I don't smoke, and I don't take drugs. I've done all of it, but I don't anymore. I think clearer now than what I ever have. In the last month, I've been by myself again. I have allowed myself to be me again. And yeah, I do have high hopes that Jo finds someone someone amazing in her life. I hope she finds the man that she's compatible with. I sent my good thoughts to her. And to all you guys and all you girls, because I know there's a few girls that watch. I hope you have an amazing week. And soon enough, guys and girls, get back to some cool car shit. But for now, let's just leave it at that. Love is the most amazing thing. What you envision comes to you. If you don't want the bad, don't envision a bad girl. Girls, if you want a guy that's going to love you and cherish you, don't don't make him beg for that shit. You treat him like a king and you get treated like a queen. But don't choose a shit cut. Don't choose a shit dude because he's got money or he's good in bed. He looks good in tight pants. Understand that your compatibility is more important than anything else. Good night, guys. Have a lovely night. Be safe.